Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a great day and making it a brilliant one. Today, I'm going to share with you how to color grade exactly. And when I say exactly, I mean it. Exactly like Renaissance paintings in Photoshop. You see, when you want to reference colors exactly from some other image, it always helps when you do it piece by piece to get an exact match. And you can use this technique to reference anything. I'm super excited to share this technique with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download any of these photos and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. To get a good reference of any style, it always helps a lot to have a reference. And for this example, we're going to be using a reference of this one, which is the portrait of Hermann Doomer by Rembrandt. And this was painted in 1640 and turns out Hermann Doomer was a successful cabinet maker. It really makes me happy to see artists and craftsmen celebrated back in 1640. So I have both the subject and the reference open in Photoshop. The first thing we can do is select the rectangular marquee tool and select a part of the reference. You don't have to select it all. That's fine. Press Ctrl or Command C and come back to the subject, Ctrl or Command V. And you can name this layer reference if you wish to. And then let's place it at the corner just right here, Ctrl or Command T. Let's make it smaller so that it doesn't take too much space. If you don't want your mind to get jumbled up, let us take things one at a time, starting with the background. Now with the reference painting right here, it is quite dull for our taste and what we are going for. So first of all, let us set the reference right and then we can start with the background. Otherwise, the entire image would be dull. So let us create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. And we only want to apply these curves to the painting. So let's click on this button to create a clipping mask so that it's limited to the painting. And now let's take the slider on the right to the left. And we can stop just about right there. This seems to be about right and a good match. And now you can even merge it. To less complicate things, just select the topmost layer, hold the control or command, select the reference, press control or command E merge it. You can rename it if you wish to. That is up to you. With a better starting point now, select the background layer and let's create another curves adjustment layer. You know curves is our favorite, right? Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and focus just on the background. To get a good match from the get-go, here's a trick you can use. Just double click on the middle eyedropper right here and when you try to sample anything, it won't sample anything but white. You know why? Because by default, the mask is selected. Adobe needs to fix this. Hit cancel. Make sure the symbol is selected right here. And then double click on the middle eyedropper. Now you can sample this background area, which could be the midtones. Something like so. Or maybe from this area. All right. Also, you want to make sure sample size is somewhere around 3 by 3. Sample all layers is checked. There you have it. Maybe we can go with this. Hit OK. No, we don't want to save it as a default. Otherwise, all of the other images would go crazy for future projects. Now, let's click on a similar area in this subject as well. And there you go. The background instantly matched. Now we need to, of course, do some changes right here. Let's go to the reference layer and let's bring it right here so that we can have a good reference of the reference and the original background. Let's get back to the curves and go to different channels. I feel that we can have a little more of the greens. So let's go to the green channel and maybe we can increase it slightly. It matches more. Now let's go to the blue channel and maybe we can decrease it even more. Now with the red channel, let's see what we can do. Increase it or decrease it. Maybe increase it. Fine. Now the background is mostly matching. But the dark areas are not quite as much matching. So we're going to go to the RGB area and take the point on the left hand side and just raise it up slightly like so. And that is getting quite closer. And maybe you want a little more contrast. And for it, the slider on the right needs to come to the left. There you go. The background is done. Let's go to the reference and just move it right here. Don't focus on the subject yet. Now we need to limit it just to the subject. For that, what do we need to do? We need to create a mask. So you can select a mask, take the brush and start painting areas with black. Black hides, white shows. As simple as that. So with a soft round brush, we can paint the areas of the subject with black. Or you can do it automatically. Let's select the background layer. And with any of the selection tools selected, I recommend going inside of Select and Mask directly. And then you can click on select subject. It does a fantastic job, but the hair areas 
are also selecting a bit of the background. Now you don't have to have an absolutely accurate selection, but when you can, you should. Let's select the Refine Edge brush tool and let us paint over these areas. All right, that should be fine. Now it is not perfect, but enough for color grading masks. Now we just want a selection out of this, so let's scroll down and set the output to a selection. Hit OK. There you have it. Now with the mask selected for the curves, which should be affecting the background, let us fill that area with black. With foreground color black, press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. There you go. Control or Command D. Perfectly done. And do not forget to name the layer. Let's name it Background Grade. Now it is time for us to color grade the subject. We might be using multiple layers, so it just helps to have a group and the group can have one mask. So let's create a curves adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now I recommend directly putting that inside of a group. So with the curves adjustment layer selected, press Ctrl or Command G. And then you can copy this mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag and drop it right here. Now we have a mask for the group, but this is opposite of what we want because whatever changes we make in this curve right here for the subject, it's happening to the background. We want the opposite mask. So let's select this mask and press Ctrl or Command I. Now we have the mask of just the subject. Whatever we do will be limited to the subject. And let us name this group Subject Grade. There you go. First things first, let us start with the skin tone where the attention goes the most. And first of all, let us just match the brightness and the contrast of these two areas. How do we do that? We need to take away the colors because colors might be distracting us. So to temporarily take it away, simply create a solid color adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choosing solid color. Choose any color with zero saturation, like white, gray, black, anything like that. Hit OK. And place it at the very top even on top of the reference, and then change the blend mode from normal to color. This takes away all the colors so that it's less distracting to you. You might be wondering, why not just use hue saturation and just take down the saturation? Fair question. Let me ask you a question. Here's a gradient from yellow to red. Which color is brighter? Or at least which color seems brighter to your perception? If you're like the most of us, you would say that this color is brighter than this one. However, if you look at the actual colors right here, the brightness level on both of them is 100%. And then, if you were to use something like hue saturation and you just took down the saturation, this is what you would see. As opposed to, if you were to create, let's say, a solid color adjustment layer and chose gray or black or anything like that and changed the blend mode to color, this is what you would see. And that is why, in this example, we created a solid color adjustment layer and changed the blend mode to color. I hope that makes sense. Now let's get to the reference and let us make it larger and place it by the side so that we can have a good reference of the skin right here. Now let's come back to the subject grade group. Inside of that we have this one layer. Let's open up the properties by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer. And with the help of the hand right here, it becomes very easy to adjust it. Select the hand and this area looks very bright. So we're just gonna click and drag it down. And by doing that, other areas have become too dark. So click and drag it up like so. Now there are other shine spots as well. We need to take care of that. Let's create one more curves adjustment layer and just let's take it down like so. And we want to limit it to the bright areas. And how do we do that? Blend if. So double click on the right hand side of this layer. The layer style dialog box will show up. And then we need to just take it away from the dark areas by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Like so. This is harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart and take it all apart. And then you can adjust it to your liking. All right. This seems to be about right. And we are pretty much matching pretty much there. Let's get back to this. I feel that this area needs to be a bit darker with the help of the hand. Maybe we can select this area and make it slightly darker. And this area right here needs to be darker too. All right, now we are getting really, really close with this one. Now at some points of your workflow, I recommend that you go ahead and take a break. Maybe just for a few seconds, look elsewhere. Look at something else because sometimes we get so engrossed into things like this that we miss certain things. Let's get back to this curves. So I feel that I've made it way too dark and we're going to take this point and with the help of the arrow keys, move it slightly. And now it is better than before. When I look at this layer again, 
this was not harming too much. So let's decrease the opacity of this and slowly and gradually increase it to a point which matches the best. So I feel at about 70% is good. Now as we move to match the colors, you can turn off this luminosity check layer. More about check layers in this video if you're interested. Now for some reason, the skin tone is already looking like a painting, but the colors are not matching yet. For it, we need to create, of course, one more curves adjustment layer and maybe a couple more later. And to make it easier for us, let us just focus on the skin. We're going to bring the reference closer like so and so that we are just zoomed in to this particular area. To make it convenient for you, you can also bring the curves right here for the moment. And now we are looking at just these two. So to make it more yellow, go to the blue channel. Why? Because blue is the opposite of yellow. Remember, red is the opposite of cyan, green is the opposite of magenta and blue is the opposite of yellow. RGB opposite of CMY. And in here, with the help of the hand, just take a skin tone area, click and drag it down until it matches. There you go. It is matching nicely. Now let's go to the green channel because it's becoming too green. And then we can click and drag it down. But if you do it too much, it's going to become too much magenta ish. And as it's becoming magenta in the highlights, we need to bring it back to how it was. So click and drag it up so that the green goes with what's already there. Now it is time for the reds. Let's go to the red channel, click and drag it up or down to see what matches more. Maybe a bit more reds. And what about the shadow areas? Click and drag it down and keep it this way. This is going nicely. So let's zoom out and take a look. Overall, it is matching, but there is something missing. No matter how much curves you do, that element is not going to match. Can you look at it and tell me what that is and what we can do? I'm going to give you a few moments and you can pause the video. And that is saturation. Have a look at the painting right here. It is more saturated. So maybe and just maybe we can add a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon. Choose hue saturation. You can also use vibrance. That's up to you. And then increase it. Now it's becoming more like a painting. You see that? So we're going to go with plus 10. That is more than enough and it's getting closer and closer. Now, if you do want to go really, really extreme and turn her into the great, 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 great granddaughter of Herman Doomer, you can also match the lips. So let's create one more hue saturation adjustment lip. Click on the adjustment line icon and then choose hue saturation. And this time we would be targeting just the lips. Now, if you want, you can set the target right here to reds and let's try increasing the saturation and decreasing the lightness. Something like that would help. And also we are just targeting the lips. Don't focus on the other areas. So select the mask right here, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush with white as the foreground color, just simply paint over the lips. You want to make sure opacity and flow are at 100 and just paint softly. All right, let's zoom out and see if the lips are matching pretty much. So we can double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer to open up the properties. And then let's get back to reds to see the changes we made and then make additional changes if there is a need to do that. There you go. You can also change the hue. Minus two is good to go. And there you have it, like really, really good match. I would just decrease the opacity because I don't want it to be that extreme. So let's go for something like 72. That is good. Let's collapse this group and have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Not matching at all. It's a completely different thing. I'm going to bring the reference to the side and make it smaller. And here is the after. It's just insane, isn't it? Now, if you do really want to go to the extremes, why not just also match the color of the clothes right here? We'll learn something along the way. First of all, we need to have a selection of it. So with the quick selection tool, let us try selecting this. Whoa, it did a pretty good job. Also, let's select this area and this area as well. We don't need to be very, very accurate here. It's fine. This is fine. We can work with the selection later. And of course, this area too. Now with that active, let's create another curves adjustment layer. And this time you want to make sure the symbol is selected. Double click on the middle eyedropper and let's sample the brown of the clothes of Herman Doomer. Hit OK. This is a good sample. No, no defaults. And now let's click on a similar area of the subject. Maybe this one. And there you go. Perfect match. Great, 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 great granddaughter. We need to probably just brighten this up and there we have a family picture.
Now, of course, you need to work with the mask because it's not perfect, as you can see right here, before, after. So you can select the mask. It's not a big deal. Take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just erase the extras from different areas, maybe from this area, wherever it is visible too much. There you go. And above all, mostly it is pretty okay. Done. Now after this, you can do your own retouching, your own color grading, that is up to you. And this is the final result. So here's the before and here is the after. That is how to do a color match like match made in heaven. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and making videos like this possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.